Building phase diagrams can be done by taking slices as previously shown. However, a more efficient method might be to predict the boundaries between phases instead. Any point lying along the phase boundary represents a pressure and a temperature where a dynamic equilibrium exists between two phases where the rate of the forward and the reverse phase change reaction are equal. The YouTube video link shows that the, what this process looks like on the molecular scale. To define a phase boundary analytically, we can use the Clapeyron equation. To derive it, we will start with the assertion that when two phases are in dynamic equilibrium, then the infinitesimal change in the molar Gibbs free energy of one phase is equal to the infinitesimal change in the molar Gibbs free energy of the other phase. For both of these infinitesimal changes in the molar Gibbs free energy, they are equal to the molar volume times dp minus the molar entropy times dt. When we subtract these two equations, we can group together terms and distribute out the dp and the dt. We can also set this subtraction equal to zero, since both values for the infinitesimal change in molar Gibbs free energy is the same. Thus, zero is equal to the molar volume of the second phase minus the molar volume of the first phase, all times dp minus the molar entropy of the second phase minus the molar entropy of the first phase, all times dt. We will write the difference in molar volume as the change in molar volume for the transition, delta trans V, and the difference in molar entropy as delta SM. We can also move one of the terms to the right-hand side to the left-hand side, giving change in molar volume for the transition times dp is equal to the change in molar entropy times dt. To continue with this derivation, we will recall that the change in Gibbs free energy is still equal to zero because we are at a phase boundary. This means that zero is equal to the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. As such, the change in entropy is equal to the change in enthalpy divided by the temperature. We can substitute this into our derivation to get the change in molar volume of the transition times dp being equal to the change in enthalpy of the transition divided by the temperature times dt. Dividing both sides by the change in molar volume of the transition gives the Clapeyron equation which is dp is equal to the change in enthalpy of the transition times dt divided by the temperature times the change in molar volume of the transition. For this result, we will assume that the change in enthalpy of the transition and the change in molar volume of the transition are independent of temperature and pressure over the range we are interested in.